Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is August 31st, 2022. Howard, how come you're dressed in red? Are you still bearish? No, it's, it's uh, July 31st, buddy. Oh, yeah, July 30, 31st. Uh, sorry. A I, I'm a month ahead, just like the market. You know? If you're 30, you're allowed to be a month ahead. I'm 56. You can't steal a month from me. I noticed there's a month. Yeah, I wish I was 30, but that's a different topic. Um, so let's talk about the markets. Uh, lately, I've, I've seen uh, significant improvement in price action. And even before the FED, uh, the, F the last FOMC meeting on Wednesday, uh, we kind of were seeing companies coming up with uh, missing estimates, earnings and revenue estimates, guiding down and not really selling off. I mean, I'll give you a few examples like iSurgical. I mean, they gap down on their earnings because they missed and that gap was quickly closed. And there are quite a few like this. So we're seeing positive reaction to a relatively bad earnings report, which is usually bullish, which is usually how bottoms are formed. Like, I don't know if this will be the, the ultimate bottom, but this change in sentiment is definitely very noticeable. And uh, we saw it in Microsoft and Google, the earnings report were not incredible either, but they rallied on them. So we're seeing Companies that beat estimates like ENPH, which is a solar company, just gapping up, breaking out to new 52-week highs and just following through. Obviously, mm -hmm. there is a different reason here. But mm -hmm. at least we're starting to see that improvement in price action where some companies are breaking um, breaking out on um, after earnings, which we, we didn't really see in the past two quarters. In the past two quarters, we will see like a three, four percent gap up that a few days later would be completely faded. This season we're seeing the the opposite, like companies that miss estimates, they just gap down a little bit and they they quickly recover. Uh, which to me is it's a it's a change in sentiment. It it could be like short term, but definitely a change compared to the last few months. Uh the other big thing that happened on Wednesday is that the Federal Reserve refused to give guidance for future interest rates increases. Uh, which the market the market read that the maybe the Fed is going to become a lot less aggressive in the future now that the interest rates are a lot higher than they were six months ago, uh, eight months and eight months ago, and um, I guess the market and the Fed are betting that maybe what they've done so far will will be enough for inflation. If it's going to be enough, we don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let me flip you through what I see because you can help me. So let's go. Let's go to the S and P first. No matter what, you know, I've read a lot about breath thrust from from a lot of the people I trust on the technical side that there was like a big breath thrust. I just like saying that word, breath thrust. Um, it's like a porn. The um, so we so you had a huge breath thrust. The problem I see, and I'll pull up some data, and I'll share my screen and share a few charts. Is you know, none of this means anything for me as a trend guy until we get back above the two hundred day. So, so all this is happening below the two hundred day. Okay, so let's remember what started us talking about being negative and careful versus, you know, everybody being excited last week because stocks stopped going down on bad news, which they did. But let's be honest, Google, if we pull back up Google, I mean, it's still just bumping along. No real, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's TikTok taking their business, it's Apple taking their business. Like everybody's, you know, and, and I'm not convinced we're even close to a bottom, but I want to, I, I don't want to be negative. So go back to this and then go back to S&P. Okay. I mean, so granted, uh, as you mentioned, all the indices are below their declining 200 days. So what is currently happening is considered a bear market rally yeah. still. And yeah. obviously- It can be vicious. Like we could get weeks of this. You can, yeah. you, you, can, you can get the QQQ back near all time highs and then we'll have to see where the divergences are. But right now, ARC is not bouncing, right? It's a tiny relative bounce relative to I mean, to ARC is such an unusual- I understand, product. but that's yeah. still like the hope stocks, right? And you've yeah. had a pretty big rally in small caps, and you've had a pretty big rally, like 15% in the S&P. And the, so those should be up 50, 60%. Instead, a lot of her companies are blowing up. Roku imploded. Yeah, um, I mean. The stock imploded. Um, you know what I mean? Coinbase, 
so so you still have this hopium kind of nature and um so i worry about that the, okay. the, the second thing that and if we pull up the cues i still say you know i'm not seeing the bounces i think this is a lot of apple and microsoft we look at apple here you know this is still a lot of apple pulling this up it's still the large caps moving the cues not the crap not the arc hope stocks right so there's still very terrible price action and then this breadth thrust, I think, kind of confirms that energy and, and materials are still in. Look at, look at TAN, which is the um, silk. So this is still kind of an energy ban. It's a little bit of tech, but it's still like based on like people thinking about growth within energy. So, so the XLE started bouncing. I don't know which index you started, which you cover on this, but like Exxon bounced right where it needed to. Um, and so this is, you know, you, you might have seen your last chance for a year or two to buy these things on that last pullback. Again, I'm not an energy guy, but like they, people were getting excited that they were maybe rolling over. And so, you know, we, we've got this rally rates kind of have, have started falling. You've got the dollar finally starting to stop going up at least, right? It's not, it's still in a massive uptrend. Um, and so this is all natural. Um, it's, and the backdrop is, you know, we all kind of knew numbers would be bad and I guess they just weren't as bad. Okay. But at the same time for these tech companies, they, they have to grow and for the stocks to really start moving. And we're a long way from seeing that because they're just starting to announce cuts, right? Apple just announced that they may stop hiring. Shopify just announced that they cut 10% of the workforce. It's gonna take two, three quarters for these companies to work through that, get through the productivity changes, maybe maybe drop another 20% of their workforce. You know, it was 10% just enough. So again, a lot of these founders have not seen a bear market. Tim Cook has, but like Shopify hasn't seen a real bear market. It, it, it grew from 2010 through 2020 with, you know, COVID only helped them. Um, so they haven't seen something like this, right? Um, so I worry about that. Um, and let me, let me share my screen. I'm, let, me, let me show you a few things that, that I kind of pulled All together. Right. Okay. I'm, okay. I'll stop sharing. Now you try to share. Share. Uh, thanks, buddy. Do, 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 do. How do I share mine? Do you see mine now? Yes. All right. Let's get off the porn. All right. So here's that uh, breath thrust. Can you see that? Yeah, we can okay. see it. So this is from uh, a good friend of mine, Jonathan Krinsky. I'm not supposed to share this with our private research, but um, so you so this breath thrust is important for technical people, right? Like a lot of institutions follow this, and generally breath thrust, especially when you're above the 200-day moving average, can be really significant signals of a bottom. But what 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 Krinsky is saying is that um, when these happen below a bear market, I mean, below the 200 day, eh. so you're going to hear a lot about this this week and a breathless discussions about this breath thrust, but be careful uh, because the numbers and he's gone back and looked at all this stuff. Okay, next thing I wanted to share was, uh, um, you can see there's a couple of things at play here. So proceeds from IPOs of technology companies have amounted to, so we're down 90% this year, 95%, we're down 90%, no, wait a minute, more. Uh, yeah, about 90, over, yeah. Over 90% in terms of new offerings, right? Mm -hmm. Not even counting staff. Okay, so you, you're getting no lift in the, what I said all of 2021, the supply would kill this bull market, right? And that's what it did. Now we're seeing at least supply dry up. But even with supply drying up, the markets aren't getting any lift, right? And that's because, boom, VC fundraising. Uh, so there's so much money sloshing around. So even though this was like the worst year of tech, people still chasing VC fundraising, right? So people still, you know, are living in the past bull market. And 
you know, a lot of that money that's coming into VC is chasing stuff that hasn't been proven like Web3. So you still have a lot of misallocated capital. So I worry about that, even though that's good that there's capital out there, Ivan. Uh, it's to be proven whether it's in the right hands. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to look at? Um, my trust, the other thing that's interesting, and this goes to the bear market rally continuing, is um, the consensus bulls are a disaster. So even though we got this rally bullish, there's just very few people that believe and count me in that corner. Um, what Helene's saying is, the true the bears that just are perma bears are just going to form fit this to 2008 and you know the question is is this going to be a true long crisis um and that's tough to bet on either way but if you're not betting on an oa crisis these have generally been good moments to own stocks so be careful what you buy try and focus on the leaders I'll, I'll, I'll put the screen back to you, Ivan, so we can finish this off. Okay. I'll stop sharing. Okay, we're back to yeah, you. Yeah, you stop sharing. I'll share mine. So, so are, where are we seeing? So, so energy still, and now maybe solar. I mean, it's, it's not only that. The it's industry, like, that. like solar, is just so tiny that it's hard for me yeah. to get excited about it. Look, so. Right now, I'm not worried that the ARK stocks are not rallying. Nor am I. They're shit. Like, I agree. Uh, yeah, most of them. Uh, but it's completely normal if you're like 90% cash, super underinvested. If you want to put 5 or 10% of your money to work, it's completely normal to put to work, put them to work in Google and Microsoft and Apple and Tesla. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is natural. This is how uh, the risk cycle really goes. You know, you, you start with the uh, bigger companies and then you become, you know, more, your risk affinity increases and then you uh, start yeah. chasing uh, yeah. more, you know, riskier companies. Yeah. So what what is happening currently? So while the Fed is raising interest rates, supposedly shrinking its balance sheets, which there's no proof of that really yet, uh, our fiscal spending is increasing. Like they're talking about two new big bills the semiconductor bills about built in America, uh, produce produce chips in America and innovate in America, which is definitely giving a boost to the entire sector. I mean, yes, it's still below its 200 day moving average, but we're starting to see some uh, decent sized moves, especially in smaller uh, semis, uh, which which is positive. You now that's another sector that is getting you know some new money. So. Right. It's, and other than that, obviously, it's, it's clean energy that you already mentioned. That's the the other. Uh, new climate bill that there is a chance that it might pass. Uh, definitely di uh, giving a big boost. I think on Wednesday or Thursday, there were so many solar companies that uh, went up more than 10% on three to five times their average volume. This is some serious accumulation. Uh, and yes, it's a tiny sector, but uh, you have to start from somewhere. It's a good thing that we're we're not really talking only about uh, two or three stocks near the 52 week highs. There are more showing up and as i said i still believe this is a bear market rally i wouldn't be surprised if the indices have at some point in the next two three months another leg down especially ahead of the midterm elections stocks are typically weak ahead of the midterms but while the indices are making potentially making new lows i think we'll see more stocks kind of building bases not really confirming yeah. that new lows so this is why i'm saying that correlations are starting to to decline and it, it's time to really uh, uh, put more effort into stock picking because some stocks are starting to show. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I got to clean. This is a time where you got to clean up. If your stocks aren't bouncing with the market, you're in trouble. Um, so e-commerce isn't bouncing. Retail is a dog. I don't know, XRC. Yeah. I mean, obviously, so these are Walmart, not, you, yeah. you know, like we have lost some, you know, a lot of that is Walmart. And hey, look at this. I mean, they, they had like the worst report in their history and the gap was closed three days later i know it's a gap but look at the month weekly and monthly like they're gonna have to start actually performing and now you got four years of uh overhead or two and a half years of overhead yeah. uh, to clear so it's going to take a while to chew through this i think i hope i'm wrong like again i i, I use a disclosure i hope i'm wrong but i'm in the process of like 
finally starting to look at the all-time high list, hoping to see some growth names. Solar. I've, yeah. never, I've never made a diamond solar. Oh, so what's this? Uh, well, just an in, in industrial company. So we're we're uh, starting to see some, you know, I mean, like for example, this one, a yeah. HVAC play, like ventilation, air conditioning, as you know, yeah. most of Europe mm -hmm. is under extreme uh, heat conditions and not only Europe, but the world. So this is like a probably a long-term trend and there are other plays in this yeah. um, in this field. So they're like smaller industry groups that are starting to to show their relative strength. So th that's why I said it is, it is the time to really do some stock picking because correlations are starting to fall. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's a, it'll be an interesting way. It's it's getting the summer doldrums. You know, I don't want to work to August. People are taking their Europe's going to take their their last vacations. Americans get to the beach in August before yeah. it's back to school. Um, but there's just so many beat. So I think we, like you said, we could rally twenty more percent and still be in a bear market. Yeah. Um, the the I think what's hiding a little bit of this bear market is Exxon and Apple, um, you know, the large caps, you know, that are really holding this up uh, from a market cap perspective. So I I don't know. It's very confusing because I haven't seen a bear market where we had this. I personally haven't seen a bear market. Oh, wait, was the last big bear market. And the world looked a lot different, right? Google was just getting started. Apple hadn't, a Apple didn't even have this, the app store yet. So we, we live in a world where the, the, the indexes are so different market cap weighted than the last bear market where financials took down the bear market. So really you're not going to see a collapse until Apple implodes. And maybe with the M1 chip and just the complete dominance uh, of Apple, uh, I own it. So, I, you know, I, I don't think I have much alpha there, but like they continue to shock and awe people. So, you know, um, I think like you said, stock picking is going to matter. I'm definitely trying to reposition a few ideas because e-commerce isn't bouncing and retail is not bouncing at all. So I'm a little nervous there. Um so you've got to be realistic about what you own and kind of use these, these divergences and relative strength to kind of reposition your portfolio, which I'm trying to do. But I'm, I, I, I'm still kind of leaning on the bearer side. Where are you mostly cash still? Nothing can change for you this way. Mostly week. cash, but I'm definitely getting a little bit more aggressive because I see more opportunities and um, definitely getting more active. Because, yeah. you know, the if market... you told me that Apple's at basically all time highs with China shot, uh, Russia shot, uh, US dollar, where it is, and interest rates going from and mortgage rates at 5%, I don't think I could have predicted that Apple would still be at all time highs. I mean, they... oh, oil at $100. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like, uh, so I think there's a lot of. Uh, we're Apple's running a lot of coverage cover for everybody. Um, and I still think like, if we look at China, I mean, oh my goodness, like people are like, that is truly closed off to us. Like, yeah. like if I look at Alibaba, like where's that going? Zero. I mean, how is Baba? Yeah. Chinese companies are having issues uh, right now. You know, so, no, I mean, yeah. no, you can't invest in China. I've said that for six, seven months, like it's uninvestable. But you kind of hope, but they just continue to throw in the towel and shut themselves off to the world. So, so what that says to me too is even if we bottom and have growth, like we have a half of the world shut, you know, customer base shut off to people. So I still think we get that valuation compression. And my I'm trying to figure out what gets valuations growing again. And you know, having all this money in in still freely flowing into VC just means valuations are going to stay high. And, and I don't love that. That's that's the kind of stuff that bothers me. I like to see more panic. But anyways, I hope everybody has a great week. Ivan, thanks for doing this as always. All right, Howard. See you next week. See you, everybody.